I'd like to call the meeting to order uh, for today. Was it May 22nd? It is 21st, excuse me, at uh, 6 05 p.m. As a statement to uh, our guest tonight, uh, if you'd like to speak before the commission, please complete a blue speaker request form and give it to the clerk prior to the item there and back. Uh, Stephanie, could we please call roll, please? Commissioner Fitch? Present. Commissioner Gracia? Here. Commissioner Varela? Here. <coughs> Commissioner Warden? Here. Vice Chair Dinko? Here. Thank you. And tonight, the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Commissioner Gracia. Please stand. Our first item this evening is the introduction of our city's new public safety commissioner, Kenneth Fitch. Mr. Jones, would you like to introduce? On May 8th, the city, Eastville City Council appointed our new public safety commissioner, Ken Fitch. He was appointed by council member um, Joe Tassari. Commissioner Fitch has approximately two decades of public service. He is a Marine Corps combat veteran in operations enduring freedom and remains active in the veteran community as a board director for the Veteran.me Foundation and, mon and volunteering with other veteran organizations. He is currently employed as an investigator for the LA County Sheriff's Department in the Detective D Division, as well as being a co-owner of a small business. Commissioner Fitch has his bachelor's in administration of just Justice Management from Union Institute of University in Los Angeles and a Master's of Public Administration in Organizational Leadership from National University in San Diego and is currently pursuing a PhD in Global Leadership and Change from Pepperdine University. He is also a Master Instructor for California Peace Officer Standards and Training. Commissioner Fitch recently moved to the City of Eastville with his family. We are looking forward to working with you and the Public Safety Commission. Welcome to the City of Eastville. Thank you. We had a few more guests uh, come in um, as we're just starting. If anybody would like to speak tonight, we do have blue cards in the back. To please fill it out and give it to the city clerk before the item if you're so interested. So I see you have one. Thank you. Next item is uh, item 3.2, the code enforcement update provided by Senior Community Enhancement Officer, Ronald Marina. Good evening, good evening, Commissioner, City Council, staff members, and members of the public. Last month, the Public Safety Commission requested an update on street vendors. The Community Enhancement and Safety Division has prepared a PowerPoint slide, and hopefully we can address some of the questions. SB, SB 946 was approved by the governor last year, September 17, 2018, and became effective January 1, 2019. What does SB 946 mean? SB 946 allows sidewalk vending to operate within municipalities. Meanwhile, local authorities can adopt ordinances in such a manner how vendors operate within specific parts of public right-of-way. This can include operating times, location, car specifications, setup requirements, prerequisites, administrative citations, and other measures that relate to safety and welfare concerns of the community. Once again, SB 946 was approved last year and it went into effect January 1st, 2019. Um, because of this, the SB, not, excuse me, SB 946 allows sidewalk vendors to operate within municipalities. I apologize, I'm on the wrong slide. Once again, SB 946 became effective January 1st, 2019. Therefore, the city adopted Title VI, Chapter 6.76, Roadside and Sidewalk Vending to be in compliance with the new Senate bill that became effective April 1st, 2019. The purpose of this chapter 
6.76 was to establish a roadside and sidewalk mending program within the boundaries of the city while maintaining regulations that are directly related to the objective safety and welfare of the city. What do sidewalk vendors need to vend legally in the city of Eastfield? In order for sidewalk vendors to vend legally in the city of Eastfield, they first are required to have a business registration. So they go through a process. They are required to have a business registration application, and then also at the end, they were, they're required to have a, a sidewalk vending permit. So the slides just show what a sidewalk vending permit looks like at the bottom and at the top, there's a, there's a permit that is required. Both of these are required to, uh, both of these permits are required to be on the vendor's cart at all times. So they must place them in a conspicuous place where the city staff or the county, if they approach the vendor, they, they have to be, uh, you know, open to, excuse me, they have to be on their vendor cart so if they're inspected at any time. How does a vendor security valid business registration and vendor permit? So the first step in becoming a legal vendor in the city of Eastville is the, the vendor must start with a application, a vendor application, and they also must fill out a uh, business application. So the first process is to come in to get a permit is they would stop and get an application. We can either send these, uh, you know, via email or they can come in and, and uh, fill out the applications. Some of the application requirements are they would have to have a valid California or government ID. Uh, they would have to include their name and address and telephone number on the application. They would propose a, a location and hours of operation. They would include if they're going to have a stationary or mobile card at that time, the type of food uh, or merchandise to be sold. They, they were required to have a valid uh, business registration. Liability insurance is required. Uh, proof of completion of a food handling course, a valid county permit, and then we notify them at that time that the permit is non-transferable, so they can't transfer the permit at any time. There's more requirements. Um, I did include some handouts, um, and then you'll see more requirements. This is just some of the meat and potatoes that we require, some of the highlights that they require when they get the permits. After they fill out the, the vendor permit and the business registration application, we set up a meeting with the vendors to come in and meet with us. Um, so some of the things that we go over, some of the things that they can do in the city and some of the things that they could do in the city, like places where they can vend, some of the requirements and some of the some of the things that we cover are operational requirements. As you can see, we cover the vendor cart sizes and specs. We also notify them that they can have any open uh, propane open flames, propane tanks, racks, table generators, electric cords. Um, there is trash requirements that they are required to have. So, at the end of the day, once they're done with their operation, they must take their trash with them. They can't use any city trash receptacles or any. Um, like bus transit trash and dump their trash, they must take all their trash with them. So we do go over the process with them. We, de we do let them know some of the requirements as far as the ordinance, uh, some, some of the attachments, excuse me, some of the handouts that you have will cover more of the, some of the do's and don'ts. Uh, we also include handouts when we, we make uh, contact with some of the vendors that are out there, whether it's in the field or if the vendors come in. We do provide handout material. Some of the some of the handouts answer a lot of the questions. As you can see, some of the things that they, uh, what must I do, for example, and then there's other things that, other questions that they have on there, such as where can I operate, where do I operate. So it answers a lot of these questions that the vendors may have. Um, we don't have a form in Spanish. We're working on translating this form. So these are some of the forms that, some of the handouts that we issue out. Once again, when we're out in the field, we come across a vendor and they don't know the process or the procedures that they must go through, so we do educate them at that time. Once again, this is more handouts. Um, this is kind of a quick reference sheet. Uh, some of the main things that we look for is uh, a valid identification. They must have their food handler uh, card, um, their seller's permit, their county permit, and their proof of insurance. We also give them a county handout uh, this this uh, handout, it lets them know where there's commissaries nearby. One, our, part of our ordinance is uh, they're required to have a commissary. So this, this is just a handout to help them get started, and that way they know where they can go and, and get a, a commissary um, uh, membership, or so that way they can cut their fruit at the commissary. 
So the next slide basically just shows what a stationary cart looks like versus a mobile cart. Sometimes we're asked, what does a stationary cart look like and what does a mobile cart? So we just kind of put those up there that way you can get an idea of what they look like. And then the next slide just covers roadside vending. It would be like an ice cream truck. That's just an example. So in summary, uh, SB 946 took effect January 1st, 2019. Our sidewalk ordinance was adopted April 1st, 2019. Um, we, we go over some of the prerequisites that they're required to have. Um, we, you know, we, we sit down and we talk to them. We have a meeting and we let them know, hey, these are some of the things that, are, that you can and can't do, some of the things um, that we're required to go through. And then we also hand out the educational materials. Are there any questions at this time? What's the turnaround on a <clears throat> permit? The turnaround right now, we're looking at about 30 days. It depends on the vendor. Um, one of the challenges that they're having is taking the food handlers course. I know that that's a challenge for them. And then also getting the county approval uh, with the inspector as far as approving their, their cart. So it's taking about 30 to 45 days, roughly. <clears throat> Hi, um, I just want to say that I was able to go out on a ride along with um, our with Mario uh, last month, and it was really eye opening to see what um, they do on a daily basis. And um, I had the opportunity to witness um, him interacting with some of the vendors out um, in our city, and um, I'm proud to say that the entire team is very professional and res respectful when dealing with the vendors and I was, you know, uh, very impressed by your team. Thank so you, ma'am. I just wanted to say that. Thank you very much. Officer Marino, thank you for the quick turnaround on uh, getting this uh, pamphlet or flyers out. It, it's all encompassing. It covers everything that you guys uh, do as it relates to uh, sidewalk vendors in uh, Eastville. Uh, my question is, since, uh, we discussed this in the last uh, public safety commissioner meeting. Have you seen more vendors or have it had it start to tally off a little bit? That's a good question, sir. So right now um, I'm going to give my update and it, it covers the numbers. But as far as that, we've seen less vendors. We, we already um, we're not doing the educational phase anymore. So we've already confiscated three vendor cards. We cited one vendor. Um, there's only one at this time. There's only one vendor in the city that's legally allowed to vend in the city. And uh, the vendor is usually right next to the Home Depot, right off of Hamner and Limelight, right in front of the dental place. So that's the only legal vendor that we have in the city. Where we have us another vendor that's almost done with the process. So it's looked like maybe another week uh, we may have another vendor that's legal in the city. But as far as vendors, we haven't seen a lot of vendors anymore. I think they're getting the message. Um, we, like I said, we've confiscated their, their items. Um, we cited one vendor, so the word is getting out there that you can't come do business in the city of, of Eastville if you're doing illegal business and without any permits. Thank you. Thank you for your you're welcome, sir. I've also noticed that they're moving as well, like the flower vendor on the corner of Belgrave and uh, yes. so, Sumner. She moved across the street instead of yeah, to so, Ontario's. Yeah, they're not in Eastville, but I think they know that, you know, the, I think some of the deputies made contact and they let them know that, hey, across the street is another city and we don't have any jurisdiction over there. But as far as the vendors in the city of Eastville, I think um, we haven't seen any more. We're, we're proactive when it comes to vendors. We're, you know, on the weekends, we're, we work seven days a week. And uh, that's one of our high priorities. And we know where they're at. And they know that we know that they know where they're at. So right now, there's only one vendor. And if there's one out there, it's because we haven't seen it. Or it's a matter of time before we catch that vendor. If there's no more questions, I would just kind of like to follow up on the public safety update as far as the, the numbers. Within the last 30 days, we, we removed a total of 464 signs. Our street sweeping enforcement officer has issued a total of 627 citations. We responded to over 139 cases and we've received 10 concerns regarding vendors. And once again, um, we retrieved three vendor cards and we issued one citation for the vendors. That concludes my Update if there's any other questions. I'm sorry, how many citations? Did you say 629? 627 street sweeping citations, sir. Oh, street sweeping. Yes. And that's one month? That's in one month. You're welcome. 
Um, of those carts that were confiscated, have they been back to um, get their items? Yes. So one of the one of the vendors did return back to um, to secure their items and, and all their equipment. Part of the ordinance is that if if we take your stuff, we can hold it for 30 days. Um, we can give it back before the 30 days, but in return, you would have to provide a valid ID, and then at that time, we would have to pro we would issue you a $250 site. So in this case, the vendor wanted their stuff back. We, we um, secured a valid ID. We issued a uh, citation, and in this case, that case was closed. But yes, they did retrieve their items. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Our next item is item 3.3, monthly fire department update, provided by Chief Jeff Fight. Good evening, commissioners. For the month of April, 238 calls for service, and then uh, several notable events that occurred in the Eastvale area in the last month or so. Uh, engine 31 and engine 27 along with all of your northwest division chief officers uh, all participated in what we call our annual solar exercise which is uh, interesting how where we work here on the northwest corner of riverside county we share borders with orange county san Marino county la county and from years of working in this area very complex area to combat wildland fires or command wildland fires as you can imagine um, four large counties multi-jurisdictional incidents uh, be right up front there are a challenge so annually we we participate which all the agencies participate in the solar exercise so it went off this this year last week uh, both local engine companies participated along with the chief officers and again all that work that goes into that training will pay dividends when we do have the emergency incident a couple other notable events um, the haystack fire that occurred to the west of here as you all know, that was in the city of Chino, not in the uh, city of Eastbell, um, and not a threat to the city of Eastbell, but we were in communication with our friends at the uh, um, Chino Valley Fire Protection District, who we work with on a daily basis. Uh, they had the incident well underhand. Um, generally speaking, when you have an incident that's burning for three or four days, you know, without a mu much smoke, that draws a whole lot of questions, and, and rightfully so. Um, but, but I assure you, the, the folks at Chino, that's a, a, a fine fire department um, that, like I said, we work with on a daily basis and dealing, dealing with haystack fires and mulch fires, um, best word to describe is unpleasant situation. Um, once we've mitigated the life and the property and infrastructure threat, uh, believe it or not, it's one of the cases where putting water on it right away creates more of a problem uh, by allowing that hay or mulch, whatever the challenge would be to consume itself is by far the fastest way to mitigate that situation. So on, on the other end of the spectrum, the normal west winds blowing all the smoke right into the city of Eastvale. So unpleasant situation. Um, naturally, that incident's been abated, but just wanted to take a, a second. And uh, we were well aware of the situation in, in communication with our friends at Chino. And had they needed our assistance, naturally, we would have been there and in, in force to help them. And then the last item over the weekend, uh, Saturday night, um, you, you don't hear on the west end of the county too often wildland fires in our lower desert out in the thermal Coachella area. Um, I had countywide uh, division coverage, so about one in the morning, I find myself out in thermal California. Uh, evening very similar tonight, very cloudy, so in turn, very windy on the east side of the county. Uh, so about 150 acre vegetation fire um, consumed some property, ultimately shut down the thermal airport, which is a pretty busy airport on that end of the county. And the reason I bring it up, um, Engine 27 participated on a uh, uh, strike team of engine companies that were sent out to the, lo to the lower desert to provide structure defense and fire suppression. So knowing it, it's always good to share that, that Eastvale here with our fire protection model participates in the regional integrated uh, fire protection system. So you, uh, by just being out here on the west end, the city of Eastvale played a, a helping hand in mitigating an incident on the east end of the county. And to be sure the station was covered up with an additional engine company as soon as um, in a reasonable amount of time to ensure that our standard here for fire protection wasn't reduced. But knowing you helped your neighbor is always a good good item to share and we certainly appreciate it. So unless there's any questions, that's in the report. I also wanted to just highlight tomorrow night at the city council meeting, 
the budget adoption will be or the budget will be presented to the council for budget adoption um, one of the components in there is increasing our um, response uh, with fire rescue medical by staffing a medic squad at fire station 27 um, and in the budget draft about a month ago council authorized that exp or or um, gave the thumbs up on that so it is in the in the budget so um, after tomorrow night if council approves that budget um, we could have an additional medic squad um, in the not too distant future uh, in the next few months um, at fire station 27 uh, that will help with medic medical calls in, in, in Eastville specifically um, uh, while we can't say that the medic squad has to be the first responder, it, it would be the quicker responder to medical calls in the Costco area um, and Amazon up there where the population is growing in that region um, with customers and, and, and employees and medical issues are happening up there. It just takes longer for the engine to get up there uh, than a medic squad that can decelerate and accelerate and get up there quicker. Um, and so we'll have a two-man uh, two-person medic squad um, they will also be firefighters uh, um, and, and so that'll bring a total of eight firefighters in our community uh, um, uh, to um, uh, provide response times so in that case should uh, engine 27 um, be out on a call and station uh, uh, and engine 31 be responding to a fire the medic uh, squad could respond with engine 31 and they could have two in and two out uh, with a five person team there um, in, in that situation, um, which would be uh, great for emergency rescues and whatnot. So, um, you know, as our population grows and the incidences in our age of our infrastructure grows, and people's homes get older, uh, things happen with electrical fires or, or stuff in their houses. Um, and uh, medical call as our population gets older too we get more medical calls and so uh, um, um, we're um, uh, trying to our best to respond to the number of calls that we're getting for those to make sure that we can always respond in a timely fashion to incidences in our community I appreciate that we don't have a trauma center in the city or down the street really uh, some cities do they have them in their own cities so uh, having an additional medic squad is uh, and nice I'm very pleased to hear that development come together so um, that's great news I appreciate that update hey, chief as, as it stands right now do we have a so tw in, engine 27 does not have an ALS medic squad right now with them correct so station 27 and 31 are both staffed with a single single engine company paramedic so three person staff municipal okay. staff captain engineer firefighter one of them being a paramedic is it just a BLS uh, basic life support team that's with them right now not advanced well bo both engine companies are advanced life support the squad okay. is not staffed gotcha. essentially that that's where uh, uh, Brian was speaking so to we'll the, get the, the we'll squad get that. the squad okay. vehicles mothballed uh, 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 and has been mothballed for about a year or a year and a half since engine 31 came on okay. uh, online so we used that's to good. have engine 27 yeah. and squad and then we got a second engine and so we we use the two-person team from the the squad and then had a captain to fill out the three-person engine and then we mothballed the and um, the squad truck or not tr truck is the wrong word squad vehicle uh, and and it's been sitting at station 27 uh, so we have the vehicle ready to go and, and um, we just need to put some equipment back on it because we um, salvaged a lot of the equipment off of it to staff uh, the 31 uh, via, uh, engine and so we're going to be purchasing some equipment for it um, so that it's a full response vehicle so oh, great that's good news thank you we're, we're we're very excited about the additional medical response especially with all our youth sports in our community kids get hurt uh, um, <laughs> uh, um, and um, they play hard and they play harder uh, um, and um, and just the age of our population um, is getting older and people have incidences um, and so just having the extra medical response to keep our people safe um, is great awesome thank you oh by the way that that is funded out of the uh, um, every every home has a fire uh, property tax on their home 
And so that equates to about $6.2, $6.4 million a year in that ballpark uh, that is generated for the city on that property tax. Um, so um, your property tax is about 6.5 million, or 6. Point, um, or is it 5.5% for the fire property tax and 2.5% comes to the city. Uh, um, uh, so that's a, a restricted general fund that can only be used for fire. And so uh, um, rather than letting money sit in there and build up, uh, we might as well provide the services uh, to the community and that we, uh, um, we're uh, doing that with this uh, medic squad. Thank you for that breakdown. I appreciate that. Um, we have another item, which is next up uh, 3.4. Monthly police department update. I know Sergeant uh, Gutierrez couldn't make it. Uh, Lieutenant Tim Martin, do you have uh, anything on that? Yes, sir, I do. I decided to give Sergeant Gutierrez a night off mm -hmm. to attend his son's tenure, uh, 10 and under Pony League championship game. So uh, he, de he deserves it. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, as you guys know, April is Distracted Driver Awareness Month. Uh, in the month of April this year, the Eastville Police Department issued 122 citations for distracted driving. Uh, now for the stats, the stats comparison, April of this year compared to March of this year. Calls for service, uh, April we had 2,097. In March we had 2,155, which is a 2% de decrease. Total traffic collisions in April, we had 62. In March, we had 70, which is 11% decrease. Injury, out of those total TCs, they're broken down into injury and non-injury. For injury TCs for April, we had 12. Compared to March, we had 13. For non-injury TCs, we had 50 in April and 57 in March, which is a 12% decrease. Uh, total citations, 408 in April and 377 in March of this year, which is an 8% increase. And the citations are broken down into two parts, moving violations and parking violations. For moving violations for April, we, we wrote 290 moving violations compared to March of 246, which is a 17% increase this month. Parking violations, we had 118 for April and we wrote 131 for March, which is a 9% decrease. And vehicle burglaries, we had 10 in April and 24 in March, which is a 58% decrease, which is a huge decrease for vehicle burglaries. Uh, for noise calls, uh, we had 58 in April and 58 in March, so it was no change. And mail thefts for April, we had six reported mail thefts compared to March where we had seven, which is a decrease of just one. Uh, for our FBI uniform crime report, for the month of March, as you guys know, the FBI Uniform Crime Report is always a month behind because it takes over a month to get your stats. Uh, we had zero homicides, zero rapes. We had two robberies. One was a cell phone robbery at Starbucks. The other one was a prowler call where the individual detained the, the people in the backyard and ended up robbing one of the people that were prowling of their belt. So he was charged with robbery. Um, you said a belt? Yeah, it was a Gucci belt that the individual was working. Basically what it was, it was a, we had a prowler call and the sus, the two individuals were, they were adults, but they were 18 and 19 and they were pranking one of their friends and a neighbor saw them and was concerned. So he decided to chase them down the street and detain them, bring them into his garage. And then for some reason or not, he had the individuals take their belts off and he didn't give one of the individual belts back to the individual. So he was charged with robbery because he pointed a, an active like he had a gun in his waistband. So we appreciate the public's help in doing this, but please leave that up to law enforcement. Uh, continuing, we had uh, one aggravated assault, uh, 15 burglaries, 57 larcenies, 12 vehicle thefts, zero arsons. And then a notable instance, we had five calls related to street racing. And that concludes my report, available for any questions. ASAP camera's been working pretty good, getting any more stuff off that. On the ALPRs? Yeah. We had, uh, last I checked was last week, we had 160,000 plates read. We had 64 hits. Uh, 
and most of which were stolen license plates. We ended up with uh, one vehicle uh, recovery of a stolen vehicle with a suspect in custody. And we, uh, I think we are up to nine recovered stolen vehicles based on their LPR. So it's working pretty well. Are the pole cameras I like that in? smile. Yeah. <laughs> the, the pole cameras, we're waiting on some SIM cards to be put in, but it's, it's currently in process. Okay. And is it pretty sporadic? Were there, is there any specific areas they're dumping stolen, or is it just kind of sporadic? We're, we're getting most of our hits in the Hamner Live and the in the Home Depot parking lots and oh. stuff like that. It's usually where we're getting all our hits from. Okay. People coming out of town, leaving their, leaving stolen stolen vehicles in the parking lots. Okay. Lieutenant Martin, I have a question, sir. Sure. Um, and I'm going to go off of what you tell me. Is it feasible for the same update that you give the city council whereas you talk about individual active crimes and then you discuss what uh, the department is doing to uh, investigate those crimes and or stop those crimes. Is that feasible to do the same thing here at the public commission meeting? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to clarify what we give city council. We give them a monthly stat sheets. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't specifically provide updates every city council meeting. A reference to crime statistics. So is it, is it the exact same thing that we get here that you give city council? It, it's a little bit different. It's pretty similar. We give them the UCR, the uh, Uniform Crime Report, and we give them comparisons uh, compared to like last year and all that. I can provide that more and give you a, a better uh, chart to see how we're looking between 2019 and 2018. That's usually what we provide city council. Okay. It's like year-to-date stats for each month and comparisons for prior years. Right. I spoke with uh, Mayor Rigby earlier today, and he discussed with me that I guess some community members are saying that some of the things that are being relayed at the police or the city council meeting aren't carrying over to the uh, public safety uh, meeting. And so he wanted me to address that. So, But if you're telling me that it's pretty much the exact same thing, I don't see a need to. Yeah, yes, sir. Unless it's an individual that comes up as a speaker card and, and um, ask a question or and then we respond. But it's nothing that we just provide outright to city council on a you know, bi-monthly basis. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sure. Sir, this may not fall on you, but maybe it's just how the sheet's organized. But you gave some vehicle work stats, and I don't see that on the... Uh, the sheet that we have I see regular birds I'm assuming are residential and vehicle theft which I'm assuming is actually stealing a vehicle that owner's consent um, do we need to include the vehicle bird stats in the future yeah I have the vehicle yeah we can provide that to you we have that information we pull those out so do you, we can put that on the monthly and separate the vehicle birds yeah we can do that yeah thank you it sounded like they're you know, one of the more common crimes obviously yeah, usually the majority of our burglaries are vehicle burglaries. Thank you, Lieutenant Martin. We're yeah, going to move on to the next item, which is the consent calendar. All matters on the consent calendar are considered routine and are to be approved with one motion unless a commissioner, staff member, or a member of the public requests separate action on a specific item. Uh, has any staff member requested the poll item? No, sir. Any member of the public? Yes, sir. We have requested to pull item 4.1, which is the Public Safety Commission minutes. Okay. So what we'll go ahead and do is if everyone else is okay and no one wants to pull, we can do a motion for the items 4.2 through 4.6. Uh, we'll go ahead and open public comment for 4.1, and then we'll take that vote. Okay, then uh, we can... Uh... Uh, see if we have a motion for 4.2 through 4.6. 4.2 to 4.6. And I'll second that. Commissioner Fitch? Yes. Yes, as well. Commissioner Gracia? Yes. Commissioner Varela? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Vice Chair Dinko? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. And then for item 4.1, we have public speaker Esther. Welcome. Kind of, 
is my first time attending a memorial this uh, evening. I'm having bee problems, but I'm not here for that because he helped me out. I'm actually here for public safety. I live in the corner of Eastvale and Hamner. It's by the uh, soccer fields. Citrus and Hamner, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, which is the Silver Lake Equestrian Sports Park and Eastvale Community Park. Um, we get a lot of traffic at 6.30 in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. I live in the corner. Um, it's nice to have youth playing the soccer fields and what have you. Um, it's good that everybody can go into school because there's high school and elementary and a junior high school in the same street. So it's a hassle for me to get out. That signal light that has been there, I've been living here for almost 14, 15 years, and I fought for a signal traffic light on the corner of Citrus and Hamlet. Now I'm asking to see if we can have another signal light on the corner of Northview and Citrus. That's another exit of the other park. Um, in the morning, it's a very hard time to get out. I go to work. I work for Riverside County. I work for Department of Public Social Service. If I'm not out by 7.05, I'm stuck. Um, that's one. Um, in the evening, uh, lots of traffic because everybody's going to the uh, practice late at night. Um, so it becomes a, a, a traffic issue, a safety. Now, I don't know how many times I've called 911. My house got flooded three years ago. I paid $100,000 to re, uh, repair my home. Uh, we had a drunk driver who hit the fire hydrant. Um, the water went over our um, corner. My husband, my husband, George Madrid, uh, he helped the drunk driver. Um, law enforcement attended. Uh, Harupa Water, I mean, the fire department could not turn off the water, so they had to call Harupa Water. Um, anyhow, um, it took me out of my home for six months. There's constantly racing down that street every single night. Every single night. On which street is it racing? Citrus and Hamner. On Citrus or on, Hamner? Which one? It's on Hamner. Okay. And then they race down from the from the high school all the way down to the corner, we hear scars, um, screeching, racing, motorcycles, all hours of the night. We call 911 so many times. By the time they get there, they're already gone. And they'll come back every night. I'm ready my desk. I don't know, there's just a lot of, you know. If I could uh, make sure I understand your uh, primary request uh, you have, it sounds like you have a couple, right. one of which is a requesting maybe a consideration for a signal. Is it Norview or Northview? Northview. Oh, Northview in Citrus. So is that? That's another exit for another the other park. It's the uh, Eastvale Community Park. I'm trying and to think where Norview is. I'm over there. Is it one of the streets? It's just one block up. It's one block oh, okay. Uh, uh, west Hamner. of Hamner. And you guys held a lot of events. We're having the, um, the picnic at the park. People are crossing streets. There's no signal there. Okay. Oh, I see. It's a, that little street, the entrance street into your community. I see. Yes. Now, I don't want to get a petition from all my um, neighbors, but we all complain. Um, and, I mean, I, I don't want to do that. But all of us, you know, we know we are ourselves, we, we have each other's phone numbers, you know, we've already had a lot of break-ins, we had a lot of, uh, um, of marijuana houses, actually two houses from the left, two houses from the right, two houses up in front. Any active now? Um, well, they, they got closed out. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. Yeah, we we already had three. And our sheriff's department do a good job in cleaning this up. Yeah, well, we are doing our neighborhood watch. You know, we see activity that happens in not where you, you have, a, you see a young couple moving in. We know who are homeowners and we know who are renters. Renters, you never see them. Uh, as a matter of fact, one house got flooded. Well, it sounds like um, that's the 
biggest complaint tonight is the traffic, the traffic. on that street and especially uh, the consideration of a, a light at Northview and Citrus because yeah. it gets so congested during the high traffic times. Yeah, because yeah, you have moms dropping off kids. We have kids who are now are driving. Right. Um, there's every day, I mean, every day there's soccer practice. And there's always a lack of, there's no parking. I mean, you guys are going to have this, this event for three days. There's no parking. And what happens? They come in and flood over our neighborhood. They, they block our, our, um, our um, streets and our driveways. Well, the light may not solve that one. Well, no, but right now it's yeah. lights. I mean, everybody's taking that chance to cross over because that's right. what they do. There's, there's no parking. They come across. Right. And, and then they, 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 they have hustle their kids across. And, right. You know, um, they try to cross over. No, I understand that. I, I appreciate that. And it's good to hear the feedback from the neighborhoods in that area. I'm in that zone quite a bit. And so um, I can see with the congestion of the um, the schools, obviously, all in a line. And I know the mornings are very busy over there. And you get overflow from that. And then the evenings, you get overflow from the, the parks. Both yeah, of them. you get them after what, uh, 4, 5, 6 o'clock. And then you get it again at um, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. Right. And then that's when, and then you get the street. If you get the light, maybe you have less racers, you know. Well, you know, I appreciate you coming uh, to the commission tonight to bring this to our attention. You know, when we look at things like this and the city looks at things like this, it takes a lot of time. Right. But there's always a first step. And so you come in out here and let us know. Uh, we appreciate that. And uh, I'm sure we can ha have our city to take a look at, you know, maybe conduct a study and what it would take to get one installed, what would the cost would be, and what would the benefits right. would be. So Yeah, I've already called so many 911s. They already know me, which is kind of sad, you know. Well, I, I, uh, I'm sorry you're having this uh, in your neighborhood, but we can take a look at it, and I appreciate you coming out tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dingo, I just wanted to highlight that we work really closely with the uh, sheriff's uh, uh, volunteers and CSOs, uh, during picnic in the park uh, along with uh, JCSD to staff that whole neighborhood uh, um, and there's a um, well one thing we might recommend to them is providing some information on who they could call um, if there is a car blocking a driveway but we do have proactive patrols in there siding and towing cars that are blocking driveways in there as well during the picnic in the park and and I was uh, um, I observed it happening last year uh, um, in that neighborhood because um, they gave me a little tour of what was going on and then I got to see them removing a vehicle that was blocking a driveway in there. So uh, um, uh, we, we do work really closely on that. But but we'll have, as far as the traffic signal, I'll, I'll report that to Public Works. I appreciate that. Uh, um, and uh, there are a number of warrant analysis on traffic signals. We just can't put a traffic signal at every intersection or anything like that. So right. uh, we have to do some analysis on that. And, sure. uh, and then we'll also work with RSO to uh, maybe put some evening patrols out there in that area um, to um, combat the speeding issue or the racing issues. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I know it is a challenge because that neighborhood happens to be located with uh, three major uh, event locations bordering it. A school on one side, several lakes on another side, and ECP on the south. So it's gonna get a lot of traffic naturally. So, it, and, and there's sometimes overflow from Silver Lakes that comes over to Eastville Community Park. And you know that, uh, that can be a challenge when that gets to full capacity. So I, I understand the problem that that community is having. It probably won't be a simple fix, but it'll be a multi-approach fix with, you know, our partners at the Sheriff's Department. So I, I appreciate their help on this. Thank you. Okay, we have a pub second public speaker. We have Madrid. Good evening. My name is George Madrid. My wife just finished speaking to you. Uh, our main concern is, uh, well, mine. My wife said it one way, but I like to put it in a different perspective. Um, I'm a Vietnam vet, combat. I went to East LA College. I transferred to USC. I worked for the Department of Corrections for a while. And I finished out my career for the Los Angeles Community College District. I love to live in Eastvale. Eastvale has a lot to offer to kids, families. And coming from education, we have a lot of kids going to Roosevelt High School, Norco High School. 
But my main concern here tonight is to shed some information that I think really needs to be looked at by the California Highway Patrol, the sheriff, um, Eastvale police, narco police, modified engines, these Hondas, these uh, Civic uh, little cars that are racing up and down Hamner. Uh, can you put that little map up that showed um, Hamner and Pickford? There's a, there's a, there's a park just before you go across the river. There's a small little leaf park where, uh, just before you cross the river on the east side, there's a park there. And then you have uh, Silver Lakes in front of my home, in my backyard. Then you have the other community, Soccer Field. And there's kids there till 10 o'clock at night. And they're crossing the streets with their parents. Some cars don't even stop, screeching. I see cars speeding every day at, at 10 o'clock at night. The park's still open. 11.30 at night, again, you hear these loud stereo systems coming out, disrupting a quiet community where kids are already in bed or parents are trying to go to sleep. It's havoc. I mean, it's out of control. And I know this because I live right in the corner. And I live with it, day after day, after, night after night. And I believe the problem is the modified engine that these people are doing to their cars, and they're taking off, and they come from Roosevelt High School down Citrus to Hamner. And they cross over, and they make a right, and they go up to, to catch the freeway, I guess, in, uh, in Norco. Or they make a left to come up uh, Hamner. It's just totally out of control. And we used to have a quiet neighborhood. We got a petition from, uh, I mean, a, a letter of interest from, I think it was from the city of Riverside about the bridge being built. The bottom line is I said, don't build the bridge. Close the street. Have them, have them put the havoc over here. So somebody's making big money with that soccer stadium. Big money. They're paying for parking. This is the second Saturday, Friday and Saturday of this week and Sunday. I saw the sheriff there, two officers. They were just in front of the park, standing, and you should have seen the, the traffic, quiet, peaceful, respectable. But if the police aren't there, it's, 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 uh, they're irresponsible because they don't live there. They don't have children. And all I want to say is thank you I hope I make some common sense to you. And I'm speaking from the heart because I love Eastvale. I mean, we have a great city. We've got a great school. We've got a great board here. Clean it up before somebody gets killed. Yes, a lady came down from the hill, crashed in my backyard. She was intoxicated. I went around, pulled her out of her car, and thank God for the sheriffs that were there in minutes. But it happens every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Speeding, cursing. I mean, it gets down and dirty. But when the sheriffs are around. Well, I appreciate your time. Thanks. And thank you for letting us know. Um, you came to a good meeting. Obviously, Lieutenant Martin is here to help us direct some of the, you know, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday night traffic over there. Obviously, we can't be there all the time, but we can certainly direct our, uh, our deputies to get out there a little bit more often. Well, I hope to come back with positive results. Issues. Right. Uh, we hope so, too. Because of our community. We deserve it. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your service, Ms. Winter. So with uh, 4.1, do we uh, yes, we'll need, close it? We'll need, yeah, so we're good to close, and then we would need a motion, a first and a second. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to uh, close 4.1? I'll motion. I'm sorry? To approve. Uh, to approve. Correct. Okay. Uh, uh, 4.1, um, Public Safety Commission minutes. I'll motion. I second the motion. 
Commissioner Fitch? Yes. Commissioner Gracia? Yes. Commissioner Varela? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Vice Chair Dinko? Approved. Motion passes 5 0. So, so uh, Commissioner Fitch wasn't here, so we. We can have you um, just abstain for this particular item. So we'll go ahead and note that for the, just, for just the record. Just don't approve minutes anymore. Thank you, so I abstain. Thank you. So we've uh, ended the consent calendar. Um, we don't have any other commission uh, business items uh, left today that I know of. We don't have anything else. Any? So uh, we can move into the public comment section of the night. Any member of the public may address the commission on items within the commission subject matter jurisdiction, but which are not listed on this agenda during public comments. However, no action may be taken on matters that are not part of the posted agenda. We request comments made on the agenda be made at the time the item is considered and that comments be limited three minutes per person. Do we have any requests to speak? Yes, we have Nicole Torres. Hi, I'm an Eastville resident. My kids um, are going to Vandermolen Elementary School, so they're having to cross the 68th bridge when they come home. And the 68th bridge on that south side there's no sidewalk and sometimes you'll see kids who want to use the crossing guard at Vandermolen um, because they don't want to cross through Wellspring and kayak um, there's a lot of traffic there it's only a stop um, stop sign so a lot of kids are elementary kids don't like to cross through the stop sign because it can get dangerous so they're using the cross guard at the school but then they have to use this that there's no sidewalk on the 68th bridge and that is a very narrow narrow path there and um so the school has tried to put a stop to it and for the most part they did sometimes you'll see a couple of stragglers still walking on that 68th bridge without the sidewalk my concern is if we cannot get a sidewalk on the 68th bridge and i don't know who it belongs to if it's harupa valley if it's east vale it is a small bridge it's not that wide um we if we can maybe get a crossing guard or some help on on at well springs when those kids start coming home from from uh from school it's just dangerous that's all where's well springs well so once they once the kids are coming they're they're heading west from vandermolen onto 68th street they cross over that 68th bridge over the 15 freeway the first stop sign is uh, Wellspring. I'm sorry, it was, I, I misspoke. It's Wellspring and 68th Street. I so see. there's a stop sign there. My kids live on kayak. <laughs> yeah. So Wellspring, is is that fine? Or do we not have pro crossing guards there? There's no crossing fine? guard there. And it's a very busy, busy, busy street. It's the first major intersection just past the 15th freeway west of. And there's, I take go through every day, and there's <laughs> cars don't stop. There's been one accident where someone hit the fire sure. hydrant right at the corner uh, there. Is that something that the uh, the school district can provide maybe a crossing guard there, even though it's it's in our city? Uh, well, mm -hmm. I mean, is it something they can do? Uh, we can speak with them about. We we can look into it. Okay, thank you. And there's no chance we can get a, a sidewalk on that bridge. <laughs> I think that would be something that <laughs> they'd have. We, we, we it's a good in. question, but I'm sure it's not a cheap. And we can look into research. it as well. Yeah, that's okay. interesting. I, I Now I'm going to want to go drive by and take a look at it because I can't visualize. Uh, the bridge the space. on a sidewalk? Yeah. One side has a sidewalk. It's just the other side that doesn't. Oh, I see. Can you just put the yellow guy up there so we can see it? I see. And if you drive by and you see that kids are walking without the sidewalk, you'll see that there is this much space between them and the cars. Right. I see. Don't worry about it's it. It's the one that goes all the way through. Mario.
Thank you. Which side of the bridge has the, I know, um, no, um, has the, does not have a sidewalk. Okay. We don't have a sidewalk on the south side of the, the bridge. But it's something we can look into because you could put in a, as long as the bridge structure could support it, you could put like an AC dike or something like that across there. Do we or, know if that belongs to Eastvale or is that going to be Hero Valley? That's, I guess, that's probably. That, that bridge is Caltrans Bridge, but the surface is maintained by the city of Eastvale and Harupa Valley. Okay. It's a shared bridge. Cool. So you have possible ideas? There are some things we could look into. Right. Okay. Short term, then can we said can we look into a crossing guard in the meantime, um, as a temporary? That there's a process for a crossing guard, and we can't just. I, I understand that. I'm asking so, if, if so, we can so, look into it. So, so we'll look into it. Right. Yes. Yeah, we just have to look into it. Thank you, and and thank you for bringing that to our attention. I appreciate that. Do we have any other items uh, for public comment? No, we don't. So we'll, you'll just have to close the public hearing. And no motion's required for that. I'll motion for that to close it. Well, we don't need a motion. He just needs to All right. close it. We'll close the public comments uh, section of the night. Um, next up is uh, item seven, city staff report. Do we have one? Yes. Tomorrow night, um, we have the budget adoption uh, for the council, and, and that's an important document that helps us steer it for the next year. So we encourage everybody uh, to participate and read through that document. Um, if you only have a few minutes to look through it, I would encourage you to read the first part and, the, and then the summary of the budget. Uh, um, in the, it's in the first 10 or 15 pages or so, um, but it's 200 pages long. And, is that and online? It is online. <laughs> if you go to the city council, uh, um, they're, they're goes into great detail um, we also have on June 18th we're, we're going to be uh, per the direction of council we're going to be looking at a financial priorities workshop uh, um, and identifying where our financial priorities are as a community uh, and then we have also announced on July 30th we will have a public safety workshop that was also requested uh, of the City Council to, to discuss law enforcement um, and so we will be doing both of those community workshops and um, the commission is um, uh, is welcome to attend and participate in all of those um, I also wanted to share that I think in in June we'll we, we may be working on a joint uh, um, neighborhood watch uh, public safety commission thing and there'll be more information to come about that but I'm I'm hearing stuff that, that, that something's being worked on uh, um, and that we might move the Public Safety Commission meeting uh, um, to the community center um, because we're bringing in all the neighborhood watch. I think it'd be a great opportunity um, for the neighborhood watch program and the Public Safety Commission to collaborate. Uh, um, and so um, uh, I'm waiting to hear more information back from the neighborhood watch program, but stay tuned for more information. I think that would be June twenty. Uh, Fifth or something like that. It's like a Tuesday night, so um, it, it'd be great if it worked out because I think it'd be a, 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 where where we can really collaborate. So, um, so just keep that in keep that in mind. Um, trying to think. Oh, um, we have a special planning commission meeting coming up, uh, talking about um, the uh, Schleisman interchange, and, and we're looking at doing a, inter, uh, a general plan amendment. Uh, to remove that interchange uh, um, uh, from the general plan um, and uh, there's a lot of information in, in that, that that will be posted in that staff report for that planning commission uh, um, and I would encourage you all to, to review that um, and, and if you have any comments uh, let us know um, but um, 
it, there are components of it that talk about public safety from an analysis of traffic engineering and, and whatnot. Um, trying to think of what else we have. Uh, uh, no. Uh, um, and then um, um, we did a community neighborhood residential cleanup last Saturday and, and Ava out in the audience uh, um, put that on uh, uh, and organized that and, and with waste management uh, um, and um, we had I think six or seven hundred cars come through there so uh, a lot of the illegal dumping that sometimes occurs in our community it's never our residents that are doing the illegal dumping it's usually some from other city putting it in our community hopefully uh, um, uh, um, but this gave a lot of people an opportunity to, to dump things off right there in the community it was well organized and it was from 8 to 12. We also did a cert training um, and I don't know if that it, we, we had about 23 people participate in it. 19 of them were Eastville residents. Um, and that was a couple weeks ago on, a, on a Cinco de Mayo weekend, I believe. And that was a great turnout and a great event. And Ava also coordinated that. So I want to give great kudos to Ava out there. Uh, um, and uh, with that, um, uh, other than that, I think that's about it. Um, fantastic. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, and I, and I want to just remind any of the commissioners, if you hear things or you want additional information on anything, it, I, um, hopefully you all have my cell phone number. If you don't have my cell phone number, uh, I, can get, I can get it to you. Uh, um, it's, it's not a secret. But if you ever hear anything out in the community that you want more information about, and if I can give you the information, I will definitely share it uh, um, um, and, and, and do that. So just uh, if you ever have any questions or anything about what we're doing or how we're doing it, um, don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I know last meeting you brought up the issue with the traffic from the high school from across from the houses across the way and they wanted to close off the streets over there. Oh, um, was there an update on that? So, so we just implemented the pilot project this last week. Uh, um, so we, we had a big meeting with the, the superintendent and the principals and everything like that. We announced it. Um, and with them and there, uh, and then we rolled it out. Did we implement it this week? So, so, so it's a pilot project, and we implemented it. And so we did before studies, and we're doing after studies. We're monitoring it. PD is out there as well, taking a look at it. And so are our engineers, um, and the HOA and the school are all involved. And so it's a, a pretty large experiment that we're doing to see does this have a huge impact. Uh, on the school or on citrus or in the neighborhood and where are those pros and cons of making this decision um, so it's just a temporary pilot project and we're going to run it through the end of the school year and then we'll reevaluate if we do something more permanent or if if the experiment was not helpful and so we'll look at that how long has it been now i think it's been out there for like a week or so almost school's almost out yes so 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 we were just doing it for a, a few weeks we we were hustling to get it in it's a three-week study just a temporary thing and then we'll open it back up for the summer um, and then we'll reevaluate it I see we'll bring that uh, Greg just remember to do this we'll, re we'll bring it back to public safety we'll bring some facts back to you about how the study went thank you good memory though somebody's listening to me <laughs> <laughs> Brian, is there anything on the ALPR that the city council wanted us to look at? Uh, it was finally approved by them, I know, but did they send it back to us for any reason? Was there anything we needed to address? So in December, we looked at the locations. We brought that back to Public Safety Commission. He reviewed the, the locations. Uh, um, and uh, right now, they're on the mobile units, and we're finishing up the final construction and implementation on the fixed locations right now. Uh, um, and so once those are, but we've already been using the mobile units and um, uh, Lieutenant Martin shared that I think 160,000 uh, license plates have already been read and uh, nine, nine, uh, about nine vehicles with uh, missing license plates or, or whatnot or stolen license plates. Um, I did have a question about that. Sure. I know um, when we did first start that discussion, um, you had mentioned that there may be, um, some of those units put on the code enforcement units. 
We um, did not. We ended okay. up just putting them all on okay. uh, the, 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 we, at this time, we've ended up putting them all on, on our RSO units. Um, if we expand it in the future, um, or if, if it makes sense uh, to put one on a, on a community uh, enhancement safety vehicle for like, especially the street sweeping in our residential neighborhoods, since they're going around the residential neighborhoods every day, um, there could be abandoned vehicles or, or, or stolen vehicles parked on driveways or in the street um, that we could be picking up. So that might, we, we might evaluate that in the future, but um, right now our, our patrol vehicles have more air time on our roadways than our community enhancement safety vehicles. Thank you. You know, I have uh, actually one other item. Sure. Um, that I'd like to bring up. It was a citizen that brought this to my attention, and they're just simply requesting um, for us to take a look at the intersection of Sumner and 68th Street. The concern was that we may have had a lot of collisions occurring in the location, the north south um, traffic. It's Sumner is through traffic in 68th Street, uh, I believe our stop signs. And the concern was that we may have had, you know, a number of collisions that maybe could be avoided with additional traffic controls at the location. Is there any way we can maybe get a uh, evaluation on how many collisions we've had over maybe the last 12 months or 24 months? Sure. And uh, find out if, if that's something worth further examining? We, we'd be happy to look into that more. And Mr. Commissioner, we've, we're have we well aware of that intersection, and we've done a couple of studies on that. Um, I don't have the stats on the top of my head, but uh, we can pull them for you. We already have them. But I think it's probably our last one. It was probably four or five months ago, but we can update it. I appreciate that. And I mean, enforcement's great, but sometimes, you know, we can't always be there. And if there's any possibility that maybe some redesign and how that intersection is controlled might be worth at least examining and taking a look at. Taking a look at. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I had one thing I wanted to address as well. Um, on River Road, uh, I was I was actually driving down that the morning there's recently where there was a head-on collision. I guess there were some pretty serious injuries. Um, that morning also with my son in the car, a car almost veered off into my car. So. Uh, I don't know if it's distracted driving or what's going on, but can we look in, and I was approached also by three citizens that asked about the potential for a, uh, a barrier on that bridge where that turn is specifically. I did notice motors out there doing uh, enforcement, which is, which is great. I think the problem is it's just people are coming way too fast around that corner, either on their phones, doing whatever, and they come into oncoming traffic there and it's now becoming a concern with a lot of the people that are traveling that bridge uh, north and south simply because um, there's been some head-on collisions. I don't know what the stats are there, but I've, I've heard of multiple um, collisions on that bridge, and that morning it was actually shut down for a good majority of the day. Um, so is that something that we can look into? Okay, great. Um, yeah, there was, I know, some concern in the community with, with that particular uh, uh, avenue out of the city right it, it's a uh, what we call a big wide fast roadway it is yeah it sure and, is. and big wide fast roadways have very little margin of error when somebody does makes a poor decision or a mistake and um, so um, uh, we are we are looking into it, can something be done you don't want to create a new problem by um, introducing something, but you also don't, if, if there's something you can do, uh, we're looking into a number of different options and, and, and identifying what could be done uh, cost effectively and quickly if, if there is an option out there. Great. Thank you. Lieutenant Martin, I have a pretty obscure question for you. I do live in uh, right there on Hammer and Citrus, and I do hear the racing at nighttime all the time. And you mentioned there were some street racing sites written last month, and uh, I don't expect you to know now, but do you recall what area they were done in if they came from a call for service or observation or directed patrol because of the street racing problem? Yeah, the street racing stat I gave you, I think it was six. Um, that's calls for service for street racing. That's not sites. I don't have the, the direct numbers for the sites. We do have a newly formed 
I won't, I won't say it's task force because it's only a couple of guys right now uh, that we're working uh, with RPD and Moreno Valley and a, and a couple of others to combat street racing and, and modified vehicles and things like that. So uh, what we've seen lately is usually summertime is when the street racing, really the organized street racing goes on. This is a nightly street racing, just people racing up and down the streets. Uh, but for April, I think we only had like six calls for service for street racing. So uh, honestly, we don't ride a whole lot of sites for street racing in East Bell. Um, we don't really consider it a huge problem here, uh, but we will definitely look, look at it. What, one, of the, one of the challenges is when we design our roadways for the peak 15 minutes, the other 23 hours are sometimes over-designed. And so then people uh, tend to uh, drive faster on them when there's very little friction on them. And so um, and you know, when our homes are walled up against, there's no eyes on the street either. So we just hear it in our backyard, the racing going on. Um, but it's, it's hard to be on all streets at all times. Um, Lieutenant Martin, of those calls, do we know the locations? Do you know apologize. the locations of those calls? No, I don't have those. I can get those, though. Okay. I, I can tell you, most of the time, the user calls for service are Archibald, uh, down Archibald between Limonite and Sliceman. Limonite from Sumner to Archibald and then Hamner. It's usually where our calls for service are on that. Yeah, I know Schleisman's really bad, too. Right. I hear it all the time. That's great. So I, I just wanted to confirm, if we were to move the Public Safety Commission to the Community Center meeting for one meeting in June, would you all be okay with that? If you can just kind of nod your head yes or no so that I can kind of get a, a sense of that. It's not an actionable item, uh, um, but um, that, that way I can give council some direction tomorrow night so that they can make it all happen. Okay. I thought it would be a great I idea to connect you guys with the Neighborhood Watch program. So. Thank you. Uh, next item is commission communications. Do any of the commissioners have anything? Uh, number nine, future agenda items. Do any of the commissioners have anything they want to put on the future agenda that we haven't already spoken about? Looks like that's a uh, no. So with the adjournment, Actually, I have one. Did we talk about, or maybe next meeting, uh, just update on the concert that we're supposed to have in July? No more specifics as to, or I'm sorry, August. That's still going on, right? Yes. So is there any way we can have the promoters come in and update us as to um, the security measures? And you know, just give us an update on what's going on with that. Because we so, haven't heard anything since. So, so we, we can share with you the traffic control that we're going to be putting in place and how we're going to be reducing the impact to the neighborhoods and, and whatnot like that. Uh, we can't go into the detail of the security measures that we're going to be putting Not, in yeah, place um, for a, a lot of reasons that we don't want the public to, to know all of the security measures we're putting in place. Um, but we can definitely have the promoters and the operations people from that event um, come in and share uh, and have you ask questions. But there are going to be some things that we cannot share prior to this. Sure. Event. Okay, great. Thank you. But our goal is to have a safe, sane, and fun event for our community and visitors of Eastville as well alike to be able to experience. Uh, um, we will be working uh, with the promoters to reach out to the Neighborhood Watch programs or the HOAs right on the west of that the Leal Ranch and to the north of the Leal Ranch. Uh, we're most likely going to be shutting down those roadways so that they don't have impacts. And so we're working, we've been having a number of meetings with the promoters uh, along with RSO and, and the fire department and our building officials uh, taking all the pre precautionary measures uh, of events like this. Uh, they all have extensive experience in major events like this. Many of them work the Coachella and Stagecoach and and um, other such events, including concerts down at Silver Lakes. We're anticipating about twelve to 15,000 people for this event, so it's a, similar to a weekend at uh, Silver Lakes on a big soccer event. So, sure. um, but uh, Yeah, I would just well, like to hear, I'm sure, the, I'm sure I would, and my guess is the other commissioners would like to hear as well yes. what, what they're telling the you know, community as well, because we haven't heard from them at all. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We can bring them here. Yeah. A daytime soccer event is obviously a different type of event to police than a concert where 
Absolutely. No, I, I wasn't trying to say that the, the police thing was the same. I was saying the volume wise. Yeah. So um, with that, I guess the only thing uh, that I'd like to remark regarding that is I have confidence that the Sheriff's Department knows how to police large scale events. I appreciate the promoters want a good, safe environment nationally because they'd like to do it again. But I also don't want to uh, undervalue our ability as a city to help negotiate the, the number of law enforcement personnel that are needed for the event. Um, I just hope that we listen closely to the advice of the Sheriff's Department who have had experience planning large scale events and if their concern is that, that we need a higher volume of law enforcement to properly police it on the inside and the outside, that we um, um, carry that with a lot of value because those items could be negotiated with the promoters. So um, I just hope that we don't automatically assume that the promoters and their recommended um, number of uh, law enforcement personnel are not automatically taken for granted and we really utilize the experience from the Sheriff's Department to help guide us through that. Uh, it, you, your assumption is impeccably correct. Uh, um, we, we are asking our Sheriff's Department and, and our Eastville Police Department uh, what they need and the promoters are willing to, uh, um, to provide that. They are also supplementing it with their on-site security uh, um, and, and a number of other things. So there, there will be a number of, of different levels of, of security to handle the incident at the appropriate level and to have just a presence. Um, part of it is tailgating. And, and so having just security roaming up and down the aisles to make sure that what's happening in the aisles of where the cars are is appropriate um, and curfews and that kind of thing and how we handle traffic. We're looking at a number of different things like that. But uh, to, to my knowledge, we haven't had any pushback on uh, the staffing levels that we've we've uh, been communicating. Fantastic. I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and nor would I allow it. So that that is part of the agreement. So. Uh, well, thank you. I think with that last item, we're to adjournment. We have the next meeting for the uh, Public Safety Commission. It's scheduled for Tuesday, June 25th at 6 p.m., at least at this point. Um, understanding it could change. Because we're talking about the June meeting, right? Is that what we're talking about, Brian, for the combined yeah, one? Yes, it's it would be June 25th over at the community. So that was the right date. I believe it is. Let me check. I think double check. In any case, that's what it stands right now, unless it's... Um, it's June twenty yeah, fifth. It, 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 it is June twenty fifth. It, it'll be at six p.m. at the community center at Harrison and, and Sliceman, so we can hear the street racing. Uh, and with that, <laughs> this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much, and thank you for everybody that came out tonight. <laughs>